Welcome to this video introduction to the paper we are writing for the Goldsmiths Learning and Teaching Conference 2014. Here's the structure we shall be using. We start by explaining the odd sounding title. After that we provide a background introduction to our thinking. This is followed by a summary of the main sections that make up the paper. The mysteries of higher education public good and public goods and finally we talk about design options for a sustainable higher education system. Jane Austen, the novelist who wrote classics like Pride and Prejudice, was not just writing about romance. She was documenting a changing society using satire to show how the pretensions of the old order or the landed gentry were based on concerns with power and money expressed through social position and class. There is a strong parallel here with the way our university system works, through its fascination with prestige and ranking, underpinned by connections with wealth and power. As with Austin's society of the early 19th century, new money and technology is upsetting the old established order of higher education that is still largely based on a culture of patronage and deference. The belly of the beast is a phrase that has ancient and contemporary meanings, such as the biblical story of Jonah and the whale, or a term for being in prison. Basically it means being trapped in a tough situation. It also nicely describes the predicament of those working in a university system who have serious disagreements with the way the system works as a means of providing education and knowledge for society. Our paper features a discussion about the current state of the higher education system and the effects of business interests, technology and the growing open education agenda upon that system. Although we are sharply critical of the status quo, we do not subscribe to the view that the only solution is privatization linked to technology. We are in a period of rapid and profound economic and social change connected to globalization and the decline of Western economies. As a result, the established certainties of university culture are rapidly evaporating, with their workforces facing an increasingly precarious future. It is a time of contradiction and paradox that also raises fundamental philosophical questions about education and the creation and sharing of knowledge in our society. The current size of the university sector in the West has been built up in successive cycles of expansion, leaving a largely medieval model of education untouched, which justifies itself by maintaining air of mystery about how it functions. In its current form, this system of education looks insupportable. It's like a bodybuilder pumped up on steroids, or perhaps more accurately, it's like the finance industry. It can only continue to function by creating and consuming vast amounts of debt and foreign capital in the form of student fees. Our underlying question is simple. In institutions with a culture so deeply conservative and protective of the mystiques surrounding their core activities, can they adapt and can we expect the solutions to come from within? The Mysteries of Higher Education examines the current state of higher education, its legacy features, important long-term trends in state intervention, and the recent effects of technology in removing a traditional power base of universities, the monopoly on access to quality information and learning resources. We discuss how institutions and interest groups are developing their positions in the evolving landscape of a global higher education market and some of the consequent contradictions and paradoxes that are emerging. Public good and public goods describe some far-reaching but under-reported developments in open education other than the headline grabbing MOOCs, particularly in the USA where the public sector is currently involved in some radical interventions in the higher education system. The actual and potential impact of these developments is discussed and contrasted with the current trajectory of the open education movement. 
together with the recent emergence of MOOCs and their commercial partners, as well as other more radical initiatives. A useful overview of different types of openness is also provided to help orientate the reader to the different socio-economic agendas that they represent. Our final section, Designing Sustainable Higher Education, discusses possible solutions. From the expensive gradualism of publicly funded living laboratories, largely pursued in the UK since the 1990s, to more radical initiatives in widening participation and, crucially, assessment and accreditation, arguably the last remaining power base of the university sector. These more radical options include collaboration with community and commercial organizations. In this section, there is a discussion of realistic opportunities for open education initiatives for those in the university sector that do not have the human, technical and financial resources to commit to MOOCs. Here we outline some of the options for smaller institutions that want to develop their provision strategically in the long term. This section also explores the developing policy landscape in relation to open education. 